Hey all, Eric Christensen here with the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. Thanks for listening today. Uh, remember to go check out the reallifepharmacology.com website. Snag your free 31-page uh, PDF. Uh, great little resource for uh, pharmacy students, nursing students, med students, just as kind of a, a quick study guide on important pearls with uh, the top 200 drugs. So uh, certainly at no cost to you and uh, simply for subscribing to uh, follow the podcast. With that, today I'm going to cover Mementine Pharmacology. So brand name drug here is Nemenda. And this drug is primarily used for dementia. Now, an important factor with dementia in dealing with patients and caregivers and these type of medications that work uh, in Alzheimer's dementia, you've got to remember that patients sometimes have unrealistic expectations. Okay, these drugs do not stop dementia and they do not reverse dementia. Okay, there may be some symptomatic improvements maybe initially, but ultimately um, that disease progression with Alzheimer's will not be stopped in the long run. Now, it, it may help um, maybe delay the progression or allow functioning, um, a little more functioning for a period of time, but again, not going to reverse, not going to stop, so very important to remember that. Uh, now, the mechanism of action with this medication, so it's classified as an NMDA receptor antagonist. And the big thing with that, or the theory, is that glutamate, which binds this receptor, glutamate from that binding and activation can potentially uh, be a contributing factor or a cause in contributing to Alzheimer's dementia. So that's a very important thing to think about, um, that that glutamate might be causing that. And if we can block the activity of that glutamate by blocking the receptor, NMDA, that it binds to, we're going to help, hopefully, um, you know, prevent delay, worsening of uh, some of those symptoms. So that's kind of a little bit of a, a background about the mechanism of action. In clinical practice, patients generally classified as moderate to severe Alzheimer's dementia, and I'm not going to get into classifications in this, this podcast, but um, patients with moderate to severe showed the best benefit in clinical trials. So that's why it's indicated in patients with moderate to severe Alzheimer's. Now, I definitely have seen it tried um, in patients with maybe less severe dementia. Uh, again, off-label, uh, I've seen um, combinations with acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, and actually there's some um, evidence for use in combination uh, with uh, the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. So those are drugs like Dinepazil, brand name Aricept, for example. So that, that's definitely something you're going to see in clinical practice. Now, if you're monitoring these patients on this medication and monitoring for efficacy, it's going to be really hard to tell if it's working or, or doing anything, and that's just the reality of the drugs. The only way we can tell is if we compare groups of patients in research trials. Now, again, you might see, you know, maybe some modest symptomatic improvement. Um, I have seen that in uh, my career, of course. Um, but again, it's, it's not generally the norm uh, with memantine and, and these type of agents uh, and the dementia type of agents in general. Let's talk about side effects a little bit with Nemenda. Uh, primarily what I've seen in practice is uh, central nervous system type side effects with this medications with this medication if patients have them. So you know maybe some sedation, maybe some dizziness. I have seen situations where it's actually maybe worsened symptoms potentially, um, and obviously in, in that, that type of situation, the medication was just discontinued. Uh, so again, you know, I, there may be changes in mood. I've, I've seen that happen as well, and sometimes it's 
kind of difficult. Obviously, timing is very important of when the medication started and when you're seeing adverse effects. Um, but with dementia, sometimes it's very, very difficult uh, to know if it's part of the disease process or if it's part of medications or something else going on as well. So it can be a little bit challenging to identify side effects. I would say overall, usually pretty well tolerated. Um, with one exception, I, I do want to um, remind you about, and that's kidney function. So this drug is primarily eliminated through the kidney. So you've got to remember that if a patient has declining kidney function, which pretty much all patients do as they age, this drug can slowly accumulate over time or more quickly if it's more of an, an acute change in um, kidney function there where the creatinine is rising and the creatinine clearance is falling. Um, that drug can accumulate and potentially cause some issues. So keep an eye uh, for IL for dose adjustments on that medication. Dosage forms, I did want to cover this specifically. So there is a Nemenda XR formulation versus a Nemenda immediate release formulation. The immediate release is much uh, cheaper. And, you know, in, in my experience, I've seen no potential clinical advantages other than the extended releases once a day. But Nemenda XR, much, much hundreds of dollars, generally more expensive than the immediate release which is twice a day. So, um, yeah, I typically recommend only the immediate release if somebody is going to use or try one of these medications simply due to the fact that it's just one more pill. And many patients, uh, you know, with dementia, geriatrics, they're oftentimes um, taking medications more than once a day anyway. So it's typically not going to be that much of an issue when you talk about possibly savings hundreds of dollars per month. So just a little note on uh, dosage forms there. Discontinuation. So there isn't a perfect um, algorithm. There isn't a perfect way to know when to stop these medications. Obviously, if you're presented with a patient that you know has a very, very short life expectancy, they're um, non-responsive, you know that type of patient where the, the dementia medication is really providing no value at all is probably pretty easy and pretty safe uh, to go ahead and maybe taper down and, and discontinue that medication. Um, but you know, I, you really need to think about each patient clinically individually. Some things that, that I think about, um, patient family preference, really get them involved in that decision of, you know, weaning off medications, taking medications off, uh, the stage of their disease, you know, how close are they potentially to death, for example. Slowly tapering off is something I generally always recommend. Very seldom is there a reason just to pull out the rug and, and take it all away. It's kind of a geriatric mantra, start low, go slow, um, and that applies to reducing doses as well. Uh, if they've got, you know, difficulty swallowing, difficulty taking oral medications, I mentioned kind of minimal, minimal responses, uh, you know, that's probably a patient where the medication really isn't helping to uh, improve them or delay anything if they're already at that uh, kind of end stage type of symptoms. So those are just a few things I think about um, when considering when to actually discontinue uh, dementia medications. Let's take a quick break from our sponsor, meded101.com. Great resources for NAPLEX if you're a pharmacy student, for example, uh, BCPS, BCACP, and BCGP, so geriatrics exams, ambulatory care, uh, pharmacotherapy exam, plenty of study material there. Meded101.com slash store is where you can find the entire list. Finishing up on drug interactions here, uh, Nemenda is, I guess, what we would consider a pretty clean medication in that it really doesn't have a ton of drug interactions. So that's always a, a great thing that we're not complicating things. And causing concentrations to go up and down for other medications or Nemenda itself. 
So drug interactions, I typically don't worry about too much. There are a few uh, rare ones. I generally think about um, drugs that might exacerbate dementia and contribute to the prescribing of a dementia medication. So uh, anticholinergics, sedatives, drugs that can cause memory impairment, confusion. Uh, I think about those drugs in our dementia patients and I watch and monitor those very closely uh, to make sure we aren't doing more harm than good. With that, uh, I'm going to wrap up today's episode. Again, you can find that free uh, PDF on reallifepharmacology.com, simply for subscribing. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast, think it's helpful. Uh, so appreciative of all the ratings and reviews. Uh, if you've got comments, certainly reach out to us from the website. Um, suggestions about different topics or medication you want covered, feel free to, to shoot us an email there at reallifepharmacology.com. That gets sent straight to me. So um, thanks for listening. Uh, take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.